right here this afternoon. Hey, cover Dachron. Oh, Isha Hashuva Vatsit Konis. Or as Hanabas Reb Gershon. Different times. Man, different ways of doing things. So here we are on Zoom. I'd like to start by saying a Pedic to Helim. Say one that's most familiar to all. Pedic of Gimel, chapter 23. Hannah was a proud mother of Rabbi Yehuda and Lisa Septimus and of Elisheva, proud sister of Eli, Dr. Eli, Dr. Chaim, and Sherry. And we had the schus, the merit being Chabad of the Five Towns, that she was what she called herself a congregant, but if I can say she was a role model. I remember the day when Rabbi Septimus came in, Ben Yechab Edeim, a loyal son, making sure that everything was there for your mother, and you together with Lisa locally took care of every detail. We watched it, observed it, and wanted to make sure that your mother had a most comfortable place to daven. And if I can say Baruch Hashem, she did, but it's really all to her credit. The Septimus was a person who made everyone feel good. Despite her physical challenges, never quetched, to the contrary, would always push herself to do more. Mrs. Septimus would, in addition to loving and respecting all at Chabad, love to learn more, and was always that sponge that absorbed, and for that matter, shared at the same time. A sheer on a Shabbos afternoon, she would slip wherever it was with a big smile, beaming. She was looking forward to learning. And when she left, she was like enthused with energy. And she was just a beacon of light to all who met her. And as we say farewell to the Maras Hanabas of Geshem, all at Chabad will miss her, and the world is missing someone special. I'd like to start by asking Rabbi Septimus to share a few words of reflection and hesped to the memory of your mother. Please unmute yourself, Rabbi. Thank you. Rabbi Wallach. People hear me. I hear you. Okay. <sighs> Yesterday was supposed to be a, a celebratory day. And today was supposed to be a celebratory day. After many weeks of fighting and vanquishing more maladies in a month and a half than many have to face in a lifetime. Today, our mother, Ima, was finally to spend her first full day at home. She was so, so happy to be home. Kodesh Baruch Hu had in mind for her to be going to a different home. And so today, Mommy, we are thanking you for making our home for us, the beautiful light-filled home that you made. Thank you, Mommy, for making healthy lunches for us each morning, having freshly cut fruit waiting for us each day when we got home from school. Thank you for taking us ice skating and sledding on wintry days, taking us to Cape Cod, and New Hampshire in the summers, doing carpools, every minute little thing. 
we needed from our mother, even when you were carrying very heavy burdens of your own. Thank you for inspiring us to love music and pushing us to learn instruments, make our own music. We're teaching us to be creative and artistic in the way we lived in the world and loved life. Thank you for teaching us the meaning of chesed, love for chesed in the carefully packaged mishloach manot that you prepared so devotedly for our non-religious neighbors. Thank you, mommy, for sitting with me as a three-year-old and teaching me to love Torah at Petachlo. By writing out the alphabet and calligraphy for me to color in. Thank you for being there for us in all the big ways and all the small ways. <sighs> Mommy, when I peered into your deep green eyes, I felt such immense love, such incredible, unequalable love. And at moments, when I peered into those beautiful eyes, I saw also the deep pain, the pain of the six million, the pain your amazing parents carried after narrowly escaping, then devoting themselves to lives of rebuilding, and the pain that we all still carry. But it was a pain you carried with amazing, enviable, Grace, our mother's Hebrew name was Chana. It was from Chana that we learned how to daven, how to speak to Hashem. Chana pours her heart out to God fully, authentically. Talking to him in a way was so uncommon. Ailey doesn't understand it, questions her. But Chana becomes the model of ideal prayer that we emulate. from whom we learn the halachot, mechanics of prayer, and more importantly, from whom we learn the heart of prayer. You embodied the lessons of the biblical Chana, her namesake. Tefillah was like air to Ima. She had to daven. She had to talk to Hashem. Six weeks ago, when our mother first landed in the hospital, she didn't have much with her. When her aide Bibi brought Ima, her sitter, she described the way her eyes lit up. I know that, that look. I know that look. The way her eyes lit up every time she saw her grandchildren. Every time. She shared Torah. She needed to talk to the Rebona Shalom. That was her air. Many of us could never really understand the fervor with which which Ima prayed. And we did understand that what we were witnessing was an incredible model for all of us. Thank you, Bibi and Shivana, for your amazing commitment to our mom. Your love ran deep, your devotion even deeper. We took such incredible care of her in every way. Team is amazing friends, old and new. You are an expression of all Ima was about and her ability to connect in such real ways to my mother's incredible family 
Thank you for the context that gave me, gave us our mommy. It was so blessed to have you. Mommy, this world was so blessed to have you. Rabbi Septimus, you mentioned your mother's davening, your mother's tefillah. On her is definitely said, nafsha yotza bedabra, that she literally, literally poured her soul out. She took davening time of tefillah very serious. She knew she was standing before Hashem. She felt it. Some hear about it. She lived it. I have to confess, and I can do so in public, that there were times that I would peek into the other side of the mechitza just to see her davening. Because to watch an Isha Tzitkanish like that daven was something exceptional and unusual. Let us hope and pray, as we have already seen how much her feelers have helped the Mishpachan. Let us hope that the family continues to see the materialization of her feelers. And Baruch Hashem, we see the investment of her hard work in you, Rabbi. I'm sure in the rest of the crew that um, the labor was not in vain, but to the contrary. And we are the beneficiaries. As we say, your mother definitely worked hard with sweat and tears to make sure that you had the best upbringing and Baruch Hashem, our community are the beneficiaries as well as your sister being your Shalim are the beneficiaries of your mother's hard labor. I'd now like to ask mother sibling, proud uncle, Dr. Ellie Kranzler, to please share a few words of Hasbit. Hasbit. Chani, my big sister, Chani. Even when I grew a little taller, you always were and always will be my big sister. As children, you were always kind, always loving. You were the good one in the family. Honey, you were the family glue. As the third of four, I always wanted to be older because I wanted to be a part of your orbit, your orbit of goodness, of calm, of rational, patient stability. Honey, you held the soprano line at our Shabbos tables, Mirot. You always sang from a high place, from a pure neshama. Each of us carried a different harmony line, but Chani, you were the family harmony. You actually raised me. You don't know it but you were a soft, silent, maternal presence without saying a word. You taught me to love, you taught me to care. You, <laughs> you modeled goodness, quiet, pure, selfless goodness. You showed us all what it meant to be genuinely from, to love Hashem and Torah. You modeled for all four of us what it meant to be a real student. I never lived up to that lofty standard of yours. But Chani, you were clearly the smartest and most beloved member of our family. We all knew it. We all were happy to acknowledge it, but you didn't know it and you didn't acknowledge it because of your quiet and modest ways. From Beis Yaakov to Goucher to Columbia, for your art history, PhD, you were the student, the intellect. But even more, you were the eyes who detected the world's beauty 
you cherished light. You made the most beautiful perceptive art. Your whole life was about creating, painting, seeing the world's wonder, the world's beauty, the world's depth. Honey, these are not idealized selective memories intended to make you seem better than you are. These are the only memories I have. Accurate, real. And the years of your bringing Elisheva and Yehuda into the world, loving them so completely, raising them to be the brilliant, amazingly beautiful people they became. They were and are the source of your greatest joy. The recipients of your deep, deep unswerving love. Their spouses, Hanan and Lisa, and each of their remarkable children were adored and cherished by you always. You taught all of us art and Torah, the art of Torah and the Torah of art. Honey, I ask you to be mochel me. You suffered from illness for much of your life. So much pain and the aloneness that makes pain insufferable. Our hearts were always broken at the unfairness. Why you, honey? And I was always unable to relieve you of your pain. Yet you had the incomprehensible strength to suffer with love and amuna in Hashem, spending most of your days davening and learning Torah, showing us all the Torah of unshakable loyalty and dedication to Hashem. I loved connecting with you, especially on Erev Shabbos, honey, trying trying to sneak some precious moments with you as you were preparing and already ready to bring the Shabbos in hours before Shabbos began. Especially this week, this era of Shabbos, you were heartbroken to still be at rehab at the Hebrew home. You said to me, you couldn't light candles and make Kiddush and have a Shabbos in the only way you knew how. You wanted to be home, to have a full Shabbos with light and onig that were infinite. Chani, you were blessed in your final hours to come home with Bibi. Bibi, your remarkable, remarkable caregiver, a saint who loved you and gave you extra years to your life. Your final hours were in your home and you passed into the Olam HaEmet in your sleep. Honey, you are now infinite chen in the infinite place. You will bring to Shemayim your light, your beauty, your eye for the sacred and the splendor in this world. I will always love you, honey. Dr. Ellie, 
we are taught that words can express that which is limited by words. But a Nigana song takes us to a world that's beyond the limitations of words. The song he just sung to us. Pasuk of Tehillim. Definitely following your most warm words describing your mother, who we only got to know a little bit in her final years. Definitely so meaningful. May Hashem help that you and your siblings, the family should find the Chama and Chizuk and the great memories you have, as well as the Nigunim and Zmiris that you would sing together. That will definitely connect a soul to a soul, which is the expression of song. I'd like to continue by asking next sibling and aunt, Dr. Shari Stoll. Shari Stoll, to please say a few words. I thought people would talk about her intense, amazing intelligence and the scholarship that she won. But what I wanted to talk about, when I think of Khani, when I think of you, Khani, I think of a bird's eye view of you. How do you ask? I'll get to that. But when I see from that viewpoint, from that mind's eye view, is a highly refined gracefulness. And yes, I was totally in love with your hard toe shoes, your ballet shoes. An exceptional, sensitive, authentic Luftmensch with an unusual, authentic soul attuned to spirituality, Kedusha, real Kedusha. Not just the sister to me, I see not just an exemplary model of Midot, of Torah, of seriousness and study, not just my roommate, not just the best friend who is in early years on the phone with me two, three times a day sharing her deepest thoughts, how she was hurt, when she was hurt, how she loved, how she was loved, although she was too modest to say it. And the way her sensitivity expressed itself so creatively and saw reality, but not, not alone that, but really as a second mother, as Ellie spoke of, a second mother, a really unusual older sister. I remember being scared at night in my crib and always she graciously, non-complainingly got up to get me a bottle and the many, many excuses of glasses of water that I needed. Fixing my braids, fixing whatever I was wearing, braiding my long braids every single day, playing with me, never ever making me feel like I was a burden in any which way. To give you a taste of her, was one of the most shocking episodes to me that, that I witnessed. When Ellie sitting next to her at the Shabbos table, playfully hitting her in the arm, a little bit over enthusiastically, I hear the quiet, shockingly strong voice of my supremely calm, peaceful, loving, patient father, gently yet strongly saying, hit him back, that left quite an impression on me. But my favorite mind's eye view of Chani is from a bird's eye view as every Shabbos morning before anyone but my father was up. She would gymnastically, aerobatically fly me from her knees, somersaulting me, flying me with her, only her hands holding mine. And she taught me then and always that everything is possible. She taught me how to fly that I could be anything. She was a model in every way, in exquisite art making, in prayer, in Torah, in matters of heart, and most importantly, how to forgive. I thank you, Chani. I thank you, Chaim, the most unbelievable older brother to her. I thank you, Ellie, because nothing more did she love than your sweet, 
sensitivity and your voice and your attention. And Yehuda and Sheva, the most unbelievable children with the most unbelievable kibra, babe. And to each of you, Lisa and Hanan and all of the kids, you were unbelievable to her and to Ami and Abi, in particular to Ami. And to Shavana and Bibi. And you, Bibi, you are the most amazing, amazing human being and to your husband who allowed you to be that amazing human being to her. I have no thanks, but I say thank you. Amen, and Shari, thank you for your reflections as a sister can. And I'd like to ask Dr. Chaim to please share a few words about your sister. Uh, can't put it into words, but we have to. Um, Hani, you were my best friend growing up, not just my younger sister. Um, and as everyone has said, your goodness, your ever present gratitude and your sweetness is what defined you. Your true self was sometimes obscured by your illness, which ravaged you for many years. But your real qualities always shone through. The real person comes out under the most distressing of circumstances and it really came out. Uh, your spiritual quest was always evident, even in your greatest pain and times of darkness. Um, I loved our talking together it was never enough. Uh, we're always rushing, but the few moments that we had together on Erev Shabbos were very, very important. But I would always think of you. Um, uh, one time during the year, especially, I thought of you one time during the year. And it was at that cusp of Rosh Hashanah. Um, as the old year would ebb and Rosh Hashanah begins, we would say uh, a poem called Achot Ktana, My Little Sister. Uh, it's a poem uh, that was written by Rabbi Avraham Chazan. Uh, and we say it every year of Rosh Hashanah. And I always thought of you because you were my Achot Ktana. And so I would like to say parts of this poem because in these few stanzas that I'm going to say, it says more than anything that I could possibly express um, in my own words. So it starts off, Achot Ketana, my little sister, Tfilo, Teha Orcha, as you prepare and you proclaim your praise of God. And Khani was always davening. Even when she wasn't davening, she was davening. She was always saying the praises of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it goes on, Eilna, Rafana la lemachaloteha. God, please heal her maladies, her illness. Bring an end to the year and its curses. And I thought of you. I thought of you and hoped every year that you would have relief from your, from your machala so that the real goodness and sweetness and gratitude could come out. 
She called upon you with pleasant words, no matter what. In song and joy that befits you. Why do you turn a blind eye when you see? When you see Zarim, Zarim has many meanings, but Zarim were also those foreign parts of her, that illness that robbed her of her real, incredible Nakalateha inheritance. Tichleshana, the Kililoteha. We davened, bring an end to your year and to the curses. And the poem goes on, Zmira Shavas, her song has ceased. The Cheshkad Tagbir, Lachpotz Kirvat Doda. And God increase her desire to covet the closeness to you, O beloved. And as you remove all suffering from her heart, and you're inspired to seek out what was her youthful, intense wish and closeness to be with God. Bring an end to her pain and her suffering. Guide her gently to a pasture where she might rest. Far too long has she been the object of neglect. But she was still, even at her 72 years old, she was still a parachat. She was blooming, she was blossoming. Lo hifshila eshkelotah. Her fruit had not fully ripened into the full cluster of who she was, but we're grateful for what she was. Tichleshana v'kilelosel. Bring an end to the year and its curses. And it ends with a, a point of hope. And that's what we need to end as we say goodbye to you, Kami. Chisku vigilu kishod gamar. Take strength and rejoice for the plundering. Your illness has come to an end. Litsur hokilu. Raise your hopes to the tzur. Brito shamar lechem, for Hashem has kept his brit. B'ta'alu litzion, and go up to Tzion, ve'amar, and say, solu solu nisilotah, pave her path, pave her path. Chani, we pave the path for you because tachel shana ubirchoteha. Because the year is now, we recognize all the blessing, and it's not an ending; it's a beginning of as we keep you in our hearts as you go up to Zion, and we're with you, and we love you, and we miss you. Thank you so much for your words. Fine. Thank you for everything you did for Ima. Thank you. It's amazing to see the love, the outpour of love and warmth from you as siblings, as children, and from our community, recognizing the gift 
that Chana Basra was not only about herself, but how she was mashpia and she influenced many directly and indirectly. And we are amongst the many great beneficiaries. You know, Rabbi Septimus is now pressed for time as we have to make a flight to Eretz Yisrael. So I want to wish you, Rabbi, and I want to wish the whole Septimus Mishpacha and an extended Mishpacha, the Kranzler Mishpacha. You should be comforted knowing that you went above and beyond. We just watched a little bit how much you did for Chana Basrib Gershom. And you did it with love. And there was never anything too small or too big to offer. I'll conclude with a Kilmal Irachimim. Kaddish cannot be said because there's no minion. Many more minyonim on the Zoom than can fit in the capacity of a room, which is in itself an expression of the Isha Titkonish that she was and Baruch Hashem, the family that Chana Geshen is a part of. But Kaddish cannot be said, and I'm sure it will be said in Etsy still. Let me conclude with the Kail Malirachamim memorial service. Kail Malirachamim Shecha in Bamremim. I'm Timinuch and Nuchaina. I'll come for Yashkina. Malish Kedushim with Hirim, Kazaya, Kia Masirim, is Nishmas. Isha Hashuva Vatit Konis, Moros Hana Basrib Gershon, Shoch, Lama. Bavush and Achnum is Paulim, and as Koras Nishmosa, the Ganadan to him and Uchosa, Loche in Valorahamim, Yasira Hop, Zezekna for Lelamim, be its rebitter, Haimis Nishmosa. As we send off Chana Basr Geshem, we ask that she should be a Melitza Yeshara for her family, her friends, all of her Mushpoim who are influenced by her. And we wish to Mishpacha that we should get together, not in Zoom, but in person and for happy occasions only. And the Kitsu Vedar Nusheikh may offer that very soon be reunited with Chana Basr Geshem and with all loved ones with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our times. With this, I guess we conclude the service. Rabbi, safe trip and safe return. We will be in touch with Tashem.